difference between linear and non-linear mode in the climate is very important to understand. In fact, it's critical. But unfortunately, it's difficult for most people to grasp. One way to think of a non-linear event is when someone speaks into a microphone and the speakers start to scream. Most of us know what that sounds like and how fast it happens. The only way to stop the noise is to turn the volume down. And then there is a sigh of relief from the audience. Well, to no one's surprise, we don't have the equivalent of an instant volume control for the planet. So if the climate moves, or has moved as we contend, into a non-linear mode, we have to do a whole series of things to, in effect, turn the volume down, which in this case is the heat. And it takes decades, decades to have any effect at all. So let's take a look at this situation. This is what a linear event looks like when we draw a graph of it. It's a straight line and the rate of change is constant over time. Far too many people who will decide how the world deals with the building climate crisis think that this is how the climate is changing over time, very gradually. And not only that, but the worst impacts are in the distant future. They also seem to think that we will somehow be able to regain control of the climate when we feel it's necessary. As we show here, a linear event can deliver a great change over time but it would still be a straight line because the rate of change is constant. A curve of any nature shows a non-linear situation because the rate of change increases with time. It is not constant, as we see on this particular graph. And curves can be very severe. Mathematicians call this type of curve exponential, and it shows what happens when those speakers start to scream, or even a bomb explodes. In other words, it is highly dangerous and almost impossible to control because the rate of change is so rapid. At the mere mention of the word algebra, the vast majority of people glaze over and tune out. But bear with me a while, because I think you'll easily understand what we have to say. The first rule of algebra concerns the equal sign, so named because what is on the left-hand side of an equation must equal what is on the right-hand side. It doesn't matter how simple or how complex the equation is. If there is an equal sign, that is the rule. So what if we tried to write an equation to find out if the climate was in linear or non-linear mode? On the left, we would ask the question. And on the right, we would have to include all the factors that would be considered by scientists to have some influence on what the actual mode was. It is a certainty that as the factors were determined and assembled for the right-hand side, the scientific debate would start to rage. What should be included? How much influence would any factor have? How would some factors interact with others? Which would be positive feedbacks? Which would be negative? And so on, possibly for eons. Meanwhile, the climate would continue to change in an unspecified mode. Well, we think there is a simpler way of looking at this, one that is essential because society needs to know what is happening now and what the most likely result is going to be in order to make the correct plans. So once again, we take the type of approach associated with business due diligence and look at the risk of the climate being in non-linear mode. At the top is our equation looking for the mode. The graphic shows the volume decline of Arctic sea ice, a critical component of the climate system. And as we see, this factor is in a curved mode, or non-linear. Now we can stop right there, because if only one factor on the right-hand side of the equation is non-linear, then, by the rule, the left side answer is in a non-linear mode. Back to the debate. Someone is going to say, well, there may be an offsetting factor that cancels the sea ice curve. So let's take a look at a few other factors. This graphic shows the ice mass loss in the Antarctic. The most recent research shows that the loss is accelerating beyond what we see here and is now considered unstoppable. Another curve or non-linear mode. And the same situation applies to ice mass loss in Greenland. The latest research shows it too is accelerating beyond what we see here. Another curve or non-linear mode. Then there is the factual evidence from the insurance industry 
that shows the increasing cost of storm-related damage and their forecast for the future, another curve or non-linear mode. And finally, there is the analysis of northern hemisphere temperatures we show in our video, The Choice Part 1, a very severe or exponential curve, unquestionably non-linear. So as far as we are concerned, on a risk assessment basis, having reviewed the nature of several major components of the climate, the climate is in a non-linear mode, and for the safety of all, particularly future generations, should be addressed as such. The reality is that it isn't being addressed as non-linear, and that will very soon lead to a critical point of no return, unless attitudes dramatically change. As we stated earlier, most people think that the climate is changing in a linear manner and at a very slow rate of change. At a point predetermined by the IPCC, data is assembled for their next review. Then, over a period of approximately six years, that data is analysed by scientists, summarised and prepared for policy-making decisions with input from policy-maker teams. The final documents in particular the summaries and the synthesis report are then passed to the UNFCCC where policy is determined by a unanimous vote. And as we see, if the climate is truly in a shallow linear mode, at the end of this entire process there would only be a marginal error. But when the climate is in a non-linear mode, we can see that the error or the understatement of the situation can be considerably more. The reality is that we're starting to lose control, which is bad enough, but even worse is that we have no official comprehension or acknowledgement, and matters are only going to deteriorate faster as time moves on. If the climate is in a non-linear mode, and we have just demonstrated that on a risk assessment basis it is, then it stands to reason that during one of the assessment periods, the climate could move into a runaway state. As incredible as this sounds, and even though this had actually happened, the official documents would not acknowledge the situation due entirely to protocols, procedures and political gridlock. Allowing the reality of climate change to completely outpace the process of assessment. So what can we do about this? There is only one answer. We have to get ahead of the curve that we have so far refused to acknowledge and take urgent and concerted action. Then we must act assertively to redesign, rebuild, retool our world and take essential action to remove carbon dioxide from our atmosphere and oceans until we have stabilised the climate to one that is suitable for our species and all other life forms that we are interdependent upon. To achieve this we need a fully integrated plan. Bear in mind that on our current course the climate we are heading for is totally unsuitable for our species and that our most esteemed scientists are stating unequivocally that unless we slow down, stop and then reverse the current direction, the outcome will be catastrophic for modern civilization. And that's why it's critical to fully appreciate the difference between linear or non-linear mode of the climate. 